Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name's Emma. Beside me is my husband Ash and our children Minky, Dave, Cookie and Tiny Teabag. This is my identical twin sister Suze. We speak a lot about her and we vlog our daily lives here. Thank you for joining us. So I took some time to sort out the flopping hyacinths and I just googled it to double check and cut them off just below the flowers. So it's left them like this and then it allows the stem to die back and go back into the bulb and give it um, more strength for next time. And I left Sue's a little note just to say I was going to go and dry my hair because I didn't want to keep her, I didn't want to wake her up with the hair dryer. morning everybody it is Friday and I thought I'd just come out and find some green space to uh, have a minute and explain a few a few things um, or clarify a few things so yeah I put um, catheter change and kidney stent operation uh, to clarify, it was the, it was a catheter change, but it was a kidney stent removal because what would normally happen is Suze would have had the stents changed to allow the kidneys to flow into the um, to keep the, the tubes open to allow them flow into the catheter. But the the leg catheter bag is pretty much redundant or you know other, other things <clears throat> other than urine come out of there so but that still needs to remain because the, whatever's coming out needs to come out it's a, it's a way for it to get out but with the nephrostomy is now staying in she she's had the stents removed which did worry her you know if they're removed what will happen but you know at this this stage of the disease there's really not a lot that can be done. The main thing was to get the urinary catheter changed because the progression of the disease down there and outside around that catheter pipe and inside was so incredibly painful and with um, faeces coming out the, the urethra and around the catheter pipe as well was so incredibly sore and painful and no matter how much you can wash with the water bottle and things like that it, it it couldn't you can't get it as clean as you'd want it to be so with her being six eight weeks no longer than that eight eight ten weeks overdue for the catheter change things were so so uncomfortable for her that and the doctor said to us it needs to be changed every three months and they were just like i say stalling or putting a silly excuse in the way not booking an anaesthetist and sending a normal taxi to pick her up. Well, those mistakes are unforgivable. But um, as I say, let's not dwell on that now. It's just educating you all that the, these things can happen. If you're not on the ball, they would just leave you. Or if you didn't have somebody fight in your corner, you might just give up and think, well, I'm not getting these, I'm not getting the catheter changed. But then for whatever time you've got left, you're going to be in extreme discomfort more than what you would have been if that wasn't done, if it was safe to do so. And the surgeons were always saying it was safe to do so with Sue's. So anyway, now it's done. And a few of you are asking what the discussions were with the surgeon. So just remember, Sue's surgeon's not her oncologist. He obviously knows exactly what's going on because he's done every catheter and stents stent operation with his team since the beginning but the the conversation went like this basically he came in when we were on ward 14 and he said so you know what's been going on let's let's catch up Sue's told him the horror and the progression because you know once once you've been diagnosed as terminal and you and you're not really regularly seeing people 
after that, they don't really want to know updates on you. And I know, you know, some of you say that's a lie. That's what it's not. They don't. They don't want to know. Uh, or all, all that happens after that is your. Tr your they keep wherever you are. You're kept. You're, they try to keep you comfortable. Uh, and and that's about it. So, what he said to her was he tried to say that the suprapubic catheter would be better. This was before he'd gone in and had a look, obviously, at doing the catheter change and the stent removal. Susie wasn't keen on that. She doesn't want to get used to something new, you know, with with such a short time uh, that is assumed that she's got left. So, he did go in and do the stent and catheter change. He examined, he examined her first to see the progression down there and did note that it wasn't quite as swollen as it presented last time. But when Sue stands up now, the tumour pushes out right from her tummy, which would be like the liver progression and things like that. Okay, two seconds. Sorry, people walking past, it's not the sort of conversation you have when people are just walking the dog. She says, telling you lot everything. <laughs> so, yeah, he had a look at the catheter entry site down there and said it looks like it's possible to redo the urinary catheter, which was Susie's preference. As I said in the other video, I think, my head's all over the shop, I can't remember. She did give him her consent that if it wasn't possible to put in the urinary catheter, that she would okay him to do a supra pubic catheter, which apparently is a lot easier to live with, a lot cleaner, a lot less uncomfortable because you can sit down. There's nothing hindering you sitting down, but it's not something she wanted, so she, so she said, please do it the, the other way. And then once she came out of um, recovery, he came back round and had another chat. He said it was possible to put the urinary catheter back in, but everything is so, so damaged down there and inside. They flushed all the bladder out, but everything's so damaged down there that he said when the nephrostomies need changing, which isn't that too long away, um, so hopefully that will be able to go ahead as well. He will also then change the catheter again. But if it's if it's not possible, which he said it's highly unlikely to be able to do it again because the aggression, progression is so big. It's this, her cancer was so aggressive. It's just taken over everything so quickly. And the progression in the last year has been massive. That like he says if, you know, he didn't use the words if you make it to then because he never does, he's, he's, he's so lovely. But he said, the, the plan is, next time you come in, is to do the, the nephrostomy change into the kidneys, which will be under general, under um, uh, radiology, uh, x-ray. Uh, they also checked under x-ray this time to check that the they hadn't breached anything more and that the catheter was in where it should have, uh, the urinary catheter was in the bladder where it should be. Um, they checked the kidney stents and they ran some dye through as well to check everything. But he did say it would be highly unlikely that he'd be able to put another urinary catheter in the urethra and the bladder next time due to the extent of the progression. So we'll see. But the saddest thing was that Sue said... Oh, it's too bright. Sorry about any wind noise as well. The saddest thing was that Sue said um, she'd rather not make it to another operation. Which is extremely hard to... for me to have listened to and, and for her to say... You know, she's she's. Sometimes she um, she goes through so much that she tends to to give up a little bit. 
but then um she perks up and she goes no i definitely want it I definitely want these things to happen to try and uh, prolong my life with the least amount of discomfort as possible and i'm fully aware that the uh the nephrostomy saved her life that time in january i watched all the poison and everything come out of the kidneys through those nephrostomy bags and then i watched them run clear and um gosh nephrostomies are um a uh, life-saving invention but that's a little update i'm fully aware that i miss things out and uh my, I've always said my explanation of things aren't great because uh, I'm not a doctor. I just go by what I see and hear and what I'm told. And uh, most of the most of the time, I'm so um, uh, I'm I'm so frightened and tired and not with it that you know I get I get tongue-tied so I've left Sue's um incapable hands just while I came for a little wonder in the sunshine and I hope that answers a few questions and clears a few things up as I say I I'm so grateful for all your messages and I'm sorry I can't reply to everybody you know, a lot of the time's taken up with just uh, Sue's and me trying to get through uh, my exhaustion and everything else that life is about. So I will see you very shortly. This wind is picking up, I need to get home. <laughs> you are watching Come Dine with me, and I'm just recharging the rechargeable batteries for the little trail cam not had it out for a couple of days with everything going on and being at hospital so I'm going to put it back out let's see what we capture been a real tough few days and I normally keep the uh, tears right in I don't let Sue see me cry if I can help it but the stress of the last few days in hospital and it's just come out all the time and I've had to take myself off and get it out, compose myself a bit. The hardest thing is just um, it's just watching when she's physically sick and oh it's just brutal I said to her again I said I'd, I'd swap with you if I could she went no you wouldn't I don't want you to do that you know if, if I could if there was a wand she said no you wouldn't I wish I could take it all off her. So I've popped out anyway to give the car a run with its stat 
stationary all the time, most of the time. And it being a diesel, it doesn't do it any good. So every now and again, I try to take it out for a little run. Uh, I suppose you've all heard the news now of Kate Middleton. Just hoping she's got her team on it. I'm guessing she has got a fab team. It's just everywhere. upload the picture the videos of what's on the wildlife cam I haven't actually been out to check what's on it I'm gonna leave it for a few more days and then I'll go out and check and again see if I can get them from the laptop to my phone if not again I'll I'll film the screen but I think it's probably the infamous cat and some pigeons. I don't think the pheasant's been about again, I'm not too sure. I really thought that we might get like a, an urban fox or a badger or something. Or a hedgehog, maybe they're still in hibernation. Or a couple of mouses. But alas, not, not yet. <laughs> Definitely need to um, take myself outside, but it's real feel two degrees today. It says nine, it's not nine. The wind chill is taking it to two, and it is my hands are like ice, it's very, very chilly. So me and Sue's just stay in the room. We've had the curtains shut. Just either snoozing or watching telly. Um, sort of up every couple of hours really though. Uh, or helping her if she's being sick and the anti-sickness doesn't always cut it, you know. It really is so cruel. Anyway, I hope you're all having a lovely weekend. I hope it's not too chilly where you are. keep sending me pictures of the babies it makes me smile right I should be about ready to go back now Jason's with Sue's now which is why I can I feel much better when I leave right it should be okay to get back now so I'm gonna turn around and head back the other way. I then found a little church where I stopped in and I heard footsteps behind me and the vicar came in and she sat and prayed with me, which was really lovely. So I just want to say thank you for the time out. And then I was greeted with these beautiful swans and she was making a nest. Ah. Yeah.
Driving up the west coast in the morning to find a place where no one knows our faces or our names. If we don't leave now, we might never make it out alive. Plans are changing, rearranging all the time. So come away with me. Let's break free. We could fall asleep where the land and ocean meet. Wake up to the sounds of. 